of the World Science Day being spearheaded by SACOS, former vice chancellor of the university and former director for IRIS, Professor Jofus Anamua Mensa, the deputy director for IRIS, Professor Samoa C. Eduardo, former head of department, SACOS, Professor Kula Willi Rahim, deputy registrar for IRIS, Mrs. Mina Titi Mensa, the pioneer head, uh, the pioneer administrator for SACOS, Mr. Davis, heads of departments, NCRI, SEFS, and head of department, SACOS, Dr. Peter Kairi, who is the initiator of this whole program, our media men from Windy Bay and the Division of um, Publications and Communication, University of Education, all other protocols duly observed. You are all welcome to today's program. Before we start, we would like to have an opening prayer and we call on the university chaplain, Reverend Dr. Alex Edwards, to lead us. Shall we welcome him with a, a clap? Heavenly Father, we thank you for a wonderful time like this. Indeed, the science of this world has come from you and you have provided the wisdom and knowledge you gave freely to us that out of that we can change the world. Today we've seen a manifestation of how an institution like this can grow and impact in the science world. We want to acknowledge the fact that we can do nothing without you, Lord. Therefore, we invite you to come into our midst, especially give us the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the things that are yet to come. We commit the speakers into your hands and say, Lord, let your grace abound. Give us the strength. Give us the memory that we will be able to even motivate ourselves unto good works. We thank you for hearing our prayer because we've prayed in no other name but the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please, let's have our seat. So, the World Science Day for Peace and Development. What day is this? This day is observed to raise the importance and relevance of science in our daily lives. As we are all seated here, science is at, is at work in all aspects of our lives. And this day highlights the significant role of science in society and the need to engage the wider public in debates on emerging scientific issues. So the main aim of this day, that is 10th November, which is celebrated worldwide, is to ensure that citizens are kept informed of developments in science. And so we are here today to observe this special day. We started yesterday, and today we are continuing, and you are all in fact, I'm not the one to actually welcome you. I'm just uh, the John the Baptist. The one who is supposed to welcome you would come and welcome you. So at this juncture, I would like to invite the Deputy Director for IRIS, Professor Samuel Asi Eduardo, to welcome all of us. Please, let's give him a clap. And I'm MC, and um, I'm happy to be called upon to welcome all of us to this uh, event. And um, Professor Anamua Minsa, founder of SACOS and former vice chancellor, in order for the first vice chancellor of our great university, Professor. My, my mentor and chief advisor on this campus, the pioneer administrator of SACOS, deputy registrar, Mrs. Titi Mensa, researcher in SACOS. I can see. Super 
I'm happy and to welcome you formally to today's events. You know, who is supposed to do this job, but as a said, he asked me to do so because he has some other assignments and he, he had to leave. He was there this morning. Because of what the MC has just said about the work day, which started some 20 years ago um, by UNESCO. And we did because as some in particular, and as I in general, we at the, uh, our workshop in the uh, Anomabo, I call it Anomabo Declaration, that Henceforth, we are not going to keep quiet when we have so much to show as far as research in education and science is concerned. So we have lined up a lot of activities to showcase what IRIS does. And just to remind you, oh, we all know already that IRIS has got three departments. We have circles, we have ENCRIPE, and we have steps. Now, so we, s we, we see that today is one of the first activities we learned by SACOS. And I would like to thank the head of the department of SACOS, um, Dr. Akariri Peter, for, this, for the organization of this particular um, event with his hardworking team. This event started yesterday, um, Prof. And we wish you were here yesterday. But one thing we know is that you love children, especially school children. And yesterday there was an uh, exhibition by school children from from Sarkos, and the place, the whole place was electrified. Um, the district director of education was here, and there was a quiz competition, which was won by one of the outside schools in Winneba. It went very fine. And today is the second day. And today, the main purpose is to showcase how far we have come as Sarkos. Sarkos was dreamt by some people. And fortunately, those who dreamt about Sarkos, their vision, their mission, and what they wanted to achieve, we are lucky that they are all here. So we are not going to be talking about memorial service here. We are talking about live, because they are here to tell us how it all started right from the South Campus. And uh, I'm a witness to some of them, but I've been advised not to say anything. Even the day it was started, I should not go to I'm not going to mention it, because the actors of this event are all here. And it's all the time good to hear from their own mouths. So they will give us their mission, their vision, where they want to take us to, and what we have achieved so far. And whatever is left to be done, I believe that current leadership is doing all their best to achieve the aims and goals of this great institution. So I want to welcome you on behalf of the director of Iris, on behalf of the HOD of SACOS, and all members gathered here. And I wish that, we I know that we're going to have a very fruitful discussion today. It will serve as memory to document all these for future generations. In fact, we are also part of the history. So in some 10 years to come, when we are going to tell the story again, we're going to continue from where they are going to live off, and then we are also going to add ours. So our motivation is that we also have a story to tell, as they have a story to tell now. So you are all welcome to this event, and I wish everybody a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof, for welcoming us. Now that we have been welcomed, I believe we can all adjust ourselves and sit comfortably because the director or the deputy director has welcomed us. So let's feel very comfortable in our seats. So uh, we are
have said that this event is being spearheaded by SACOS, and we want to hear something from the HOD. What motivated this? What brought about this whole uh, celebration of uh, the World Science Day for Peace and Development? So we'd like to hear some remarks from the head of department for SACOS, Dr. Peter Akayui. Please, let's welcome him with a clap. Thank you very much. Um, um, the former Vice Chancellor of University of Education, Winneba, uh, former Director of ARIS, former Director of SACOS, Professor Jofus Anamo Mensa, the former Deputy Director of SACOS and former Head of Department SACOS, Professor Kola Wale Rahim, our Deputy Director, Professor Samuel K. Sedwadu, Mr. Stephen Dennis, the first administrator of SACOS, our hardworking deputy registrar, Ms. Wilhelmina Titimensa, HOD Incribe, Dr. Clement Ali, HOD SEPS, Mr. Peter Kwai Agri, fellow research fellows in Iris and staff of Iris, the media present, our national service personnel who have been working tirelessly. I stand here today because we started something very small, which we call the STEM Working Group. Because in SACOS, we have limited number of staff, so we decided to form what we call a STEM Working Group, which is composed of Mr. Ahmed Amihie, who is here, the Mrs. Nelly Sechihagan is our MC today, Mr. Charles Asiam is also here with us. And our quiz mistress yesterday, Rebecca A.C. Kwansa. We actually made Professor Anima Mensa our consultant. We are here to inform you. We know we inform you today. And Professor Kola Wale Rahim is going to be our consultant. Our aim is that STEM is now ruling the world. And we think that that is a movement that Ghana should also pursue. We recognize that the Minister of Education is now moving towards the STEM approach. And when I took over the headship, I realized that there are a lot of circus production that are geared towards STEM. Indigenous knowledge and contextualizing science and mathematics, teaching and learning. And these activities have been ongoing. But it appears that the university community Ghana and the world is still not aware of these activities that are going on. So today, as we, took, we are taking over as new faculty, we deem it necessary to first keep institutional memory of SACOS so that we can ask the pioneers of SACOS to share with us the wisdom, the vision, so that the new faculty will know where to start from. We want to also discuss the present outlook of SACOS. We want to also look at the future direction in terms of the new trends and the new curriculum that we are now uh, beginning, which we call the standard-based curriculum. And so we want to also showcase and rebrand SACOS activities to the world through the university website, YouTube, and other um, outlets. Facebook accounts and all that. We also want to discuss what we want to institute as SACOS Day so that every year 
June 19, I understand, for now, maybe you may correct me, that was when Sarkos was born. So we want to institutionalize that and celebrate Sarkos Day so that every year we will remember Professor Anna Mohamensa, Professor Asabri Amiao, Professor Kola Rahim, Mr. Stephen Dennis, and all others who actually nurtured the whole thing, who kept this dream alive. So we want to share our ideas about the need to institutionalize this one, this Sarkoz Day, and then to discuss how we can celebrate it. And so for today, we are interested in documenting what actually motivated you to begin this Sarkoz journey. So we want to also thank you for coming and to let audience know that this is what we are intending today. Thank you very much. Please, let's do it better for the HOD. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kayuri. All right, so I believe that he has given us the way forward. And there's a saying that if you know where you are coming from, then it directs you as to where you are going. And we are happy to have our pioneer um, director, pioneer HOD, pioneer administrator. As Prof. Asi Eduardo said, this is not a memorial. It's a live program. And we thank God that they are here to tell us how the whole journey started. So we want to know, um, Sarkos, the journey so far, where did it start from? Where did it end? Where is it going? And all others. And we are happy to have the vice chancellor, former vice chancellor himself, who happens to also be in the middle of the whole affairs, and his other colleagues here, and they are going to tell us the journey so far. So if you are happy to hear the story, then I would like, with a warm clap, invite Professor Jofus Anamuamensa to tell us the journey so far. Prof. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Okay, then I don't have to remove my mask. Um, thank you for the invitation to be, to be part of this celebration. Uh, I believe it's important. Uh, sometimes we need to remember what happens for things to happen now. And it's always good to do that. Uh, today we are doing it for, for uh, circus. Maybe at some other time we'll do it for Seth's and, uh, uh, and Clyde. Because they were all formed by me. You know, so uh, <coughs> we need to do that for, for the rest also. But it's important that we're celebrating the um, the World Science Day. Excuse me. Yeah, I'm happy we're celebrating the World Science Day today, and uh, the theme of the World Science Day is peace and development. Uh, I may want to add freedom to it, uh, if you excuse me, because uh, the Nobel laureate called Amita Singh, he wrote a book, Development as Freedom. So if you don't have freedom, you cannot develop. It's when you have freedom that you can develop. So, if you have peace, and that's all that you have, and you have the freedom to make things happen, then development takes place. Otherwise, there's no development. So, this is just by the way. But uh, what I'm going to share with you, I'm going to take you through the journey, where it started, the rationale for the journey the importance that uh, some of us put to 
some of the things that are happening. And looking at things not from the normal way people look at, normal way scientists look at, but looking at things that we have ignored over the years. And we seem to be following the dictates of our colonial masters. You know, what they want us to do is what we do, not what we want to do, you know. So it becomes important for us to look at that. Um, so I'll just go through that with you. But this statement, I don't know whether you can read it from back. These are the rationale The rationale for, for us to take off uh, came from some of these uh, statements we're making here. Africa's dependency and underdevelopment has to be understood historically as a result of the colonial domination and exploitation. Even decades after independence of African states, the domination from the imperial powers continues to have its control over the economy, formal schooling, and knowledge production in Africa. I mean, you can see it. Since independence, Ghana 60 years plus, our economy is still dependent upon Upon, upon outsiders. Our salaries and so on are supported by outsiders. <laughs> so we are not independent. We say we are independent. We are not independent. They are controlling us. And this is something, you know, Nkrumah wanted to put into our, our, our heads. But we failed to see the rationale in that. As a result of this domination, national economies in Africa have become oriented to meet, have been oriented to meet the raw material needs of the Western world. What we do, we provide the raw materials for them. They want cocoa, so we provide cocoa for them. They want rubber, we send our rubber to them. Whatever they need, so the raw materials, the gold, we send it to them. We don't even add value. So they will add value and bring it to us, and then we have to pay the high prices for it. You know. uh, so similarly, as a result of the same domination, the African academia, the lecturers and professors, is externally oriented to cater for the intellectual needs of the West. So they bring oh, we want you to do this uh, work for us, research. And sometimes they don't even want you to do the analysis. Or if you do the analysis, they will want the raw materials, the raw data, we will do the analysis, you know. Because they have an agenda. And that agenda is there and they control us, you know. So. Uh, these were all some of the things that really uh, pushed us, pushed some of us. Uh, so we find that as not much research has been done to support the knowledge base of the indigenous uh, communities in the country and in Africa in general. You know. Research taking place in Africa tends to address the needs of Western intellectuals than the research needs of their own countries that's making most of the Africa's knowledge production externally oriented and directed. 
The intellectual production from Africa, African academics, serve as the intellectual raw materials for the academia abroad to sharpen their theories and construct new ones from their own perspective, interpret it in their own perspective. That's a new theory. And then we all follow. So they are selling the theory to us. They send it to us. So our perspective is always on what they are doing, you know, supporting them and not following what will benefit our own communities, our own countries. So, so these theories do not take into consideration the complex socio-cultural realities of the place where the data or raw material has been obtained. So that is the fallout of this. So uh, if you are not doing our research in our own communities to find out, you know, what is really happening, you know, how our blacksmith smitten uh, people uh, have been doing their work. How the woman who sells uh, um, or makes kinky, you know, how does he go about it and so on. You know, we, don't, we, we think that that is not very good science. No. Yeah. So going on, I said that the knowledge extends in the society, existing in the society, and germane to its to it is ignored by both the African academia and their Western colleagues who view it from a Eurocentric uh, perspective because of its strong hegemonic forces. You know, that local academia failed to you know, uh, uh, recognize. You know, because there's that hegemony over, 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 over the, uh, the, the concepts and the theories and so on. And therefore, um, uh, but our researchers do not even recognize that. All that they know that, oh, we are going to do a research, and so we're going to do the research for them. You know. So, but we need to recognize that. So these were all some of the things that were agitating us. So instead of developing our own theories, we use theories from the West to understand our complex culture. You know, just, just wondering how many of our lecturers when they are writing a paper, who quotes, maybe I said they are do, who quotes reverend, who quotes people here, but they will quote people from somewhere else. Why? No. So those are issues. So unless we do the research internally in our own countries, you know, we may not be able to. So we need to recognize that African science and technology is unique and rich with its own particular worldview, which is different from, but not less important than that of the Western science. Yeah, I quote this uh, gentleman. He made this remark, and we thought that was very exciting to, to some of us. The world process of knowledge production, not when you are doing research, the knowledge you bring out, entails marginalization of old elements of knowledge and know-how, along with their steady withering and impoverishment 
and in worst cases, they are sheer disappearing and vanishing out of people's conscious memory. So, some of the things that we need to take care of, you know, because we are you know, following the Western ideas and perception, we find that if we don't take care, the knowledge that we have locally becomes extinct. You know, people don't even remember. You know. uh, I used to, when I was a young boy, boy, uh, I, I used to go with my mother to the beach. You know, and she's a, she was a fishmonger. And uh, there are some, uh, some things that we play. There was one game called Eater. You know, you use the, the sand and you, you hide uh, a round knot in it. And then somebody has to use a stick to, to find it. And as a lot of young people at the beach, they don't even know that it exists. Everybody has forgotten. So, in terms of education, we found that the majority of students fail to relate school science learning to their own problems and problems of their community, and thus fail to exhibit ownership of the school science, you know, the science that they're supposed to learn. You know, um, they can't relate it to their community. You go and buy toothpaste. You don't even know toothpaste, what is it made, for, made of? You know, you just, you just know that strip is use it to brush your teeth. Fine, then you go away. But we need to understand what goes into you. Only a few students succeed in this decontextualized school settings. So you find a lot of people failing in their exams. There was the exams, etc. You know, you find a lot of people failing. And students tend to disown their own cultural heritage. They like what is portrayed on CNN and other places, so it's better there than here. So we like that. We don't like what is in here. No. Yeah. With respect to science teachers, we realize that science teachers lack awareness about what goes on in industry, what really goes on in industry, in the beer making industry, in the soap making industry, etc. What really goes on, you know, and how the science concepts they have learned at school fit into the wider jigsaw puzzle of factors which facilitate the production of goods in industry. Then science teachers also lack awareness of STEM concepts associated with everyday items they buy from supermarkets and so on. And science teachers do not seem to appreciate the STEM concepts in indigenous practices as well as those stemming from informal sector practices and formal manufacturing practices. You know. So we find that students are ignoring and not contextualizing what they learn in the school. The teachers are unaware of so many other things, the applications of science in industry in their communities. You know. So these were all agents for us to look at what to do now, you know. However, in terms of the uh, indigenous knowledge systems, we realize that despite systematic cultural annihilation through colonialism and globalization and other means, you know, uh, the African traditions of knowledge continue to persist continue to exist, 
no, uh, and, and therefore survive in all the things that, you know, uh, they wish, you know, all these things should vanish, and then we only buy the, the, what comes from the West. So we see that there's a yearning gap between what we learn in the school, what exists in the community, and what even exists in uh, uh, indus industrial establishment where things are produced and so on. You know, we see this kind of gap, you know, uh, and we thought that this gap should need to be bridged and uh, at the same time uh, make science STEM, you know, interesting and exciting to our students. There is uh, this statement from Professor Ndoi. He says that answers to Africa's education problems have all too often been sought elsewhere. That will bring uh, these people to come and do things for us. When uh, science uh, um, curriculum was developed in the 60s. They said, oh, it's good for Africa, so bring it to Africa. So Africans were trained on how to use it, you know, uh, British and American, you know, curricula, you know. So he's saying that answers to Africa's education problems have all too often been sought elsewhere. Now a new paradigm is being adopted. Answers to Africa's education challenges exist and must therefore be sought first of all in the African context. In other words, in preparing for reforms as well as for their implementation by ministries in Africa. Africa is where the relevant knowledge and the responses will be found. And no longer just the place where solutions from elsewhere are applied. I hope you understand that. So, our problems are here. We live in this complex world of uh, Africa. We understand the intricacies involved. And therefore, if you want a solution, the solution should be here. It's not a solution from somewhere and you put it there. You know. um, so that creates a problem for us. So this led us to now look at how you know, all these different knowledge forms are. There is the, the original one was, uh, you know, indigenous knowledge is sitting somewhere. Uh, manufacturing science is sitting somewhere. Uh, school is isolated somewhere. Um, the informal system, where we have a small scale A and so on, also sitting somewhere, all within the community but they are not talking to each other. And we wanted them to talk to each other. How can the manufacturing uh, um, knowledge talk to the school? How can it talk to informal sector? How can it... The informal sector. And that results in this, you know, uh, an integrated model, you know, where there is a, a dynamic interface amongst, you know, all the, the group, you know, or within the community. So we have community science, which embodies the indigenous knowledge, which embodies the informal sector, 
and also embodies the manufacturing sector, and then the school, the school formal system of knowledge. Yeah, so, so the first project was called STAC, Science and Technology in Action in Ghana. And uh, that was set up at uh, the University of Cape Coast, Department of Science Education. You know, I got a funding from Rockefeller Foundation and also from AFCLIS, the African Center, African uh, uh, children's uh, literacy in science and technology based in South Africa and Nairobi. You know. So they uh, saw some sense in this and started to um, uh, project this. And the government of South Africa itself also took it up that our indigenous knowledge system is so critical to our development. It is historically embedded in our genes. You are born, there's something inside there, you know, that you carry along. And we need to really uh, pay attention to it. So the Stack project started in 1993, and uh, um, it came to light, especially because in the school curriculum, they introduce science, uh, industry, and society as a very important thing that should be learned by everybody. People should understand it. But at that time, they didn't have, I mean, uh, there were no materials for, for teaching that. And also, the teachers did not have any training. How do we teach you know, science, industry, and uh, society. So that was a challenge. So the challenge made us embark upon this project. Um, and, and, and through that, um, we developed a number of things. But the initial mission was you know, to uh, bridge the gap between science as practiced in the school and that practice in formal industry. So this one started with relationship with the industry, trying to um, bring the industry into the classroom you know, and to produce a resource book for science teachers and work, workbook for, for students. The interesting part of this is that, you know, um, when it started, the even the university scientists themselves were, were, were skeptical about it. You know, how is this really going to help and so on? And we're explaining that, you know, if the people are going to teach this topic, uh, science, industry, and society, you know, how are they going to teach it? You know, and it's only when you are able to train the teachers and produce the resources that they will be able to do that. You know. So that was uh, the, the selling point for this. But then uh, the, the industry themselves also were skeptical from the beginning. Uh, they thought that it was interesting, but they said they don't want their industrial secrets to go out. So if we send people there and then they take all the notes and so on and so on, you know. And we said, we told them, in fact we called them, said we're not interested in your industrial secret, but the general principles, science principles involved, that's what we're interested in. You know. So then they, they agreed. And we're amazed that, uh, you know, CEOs, their deputies, and others, from liver brothers and so on, they were able to come and spend two days at a hotel at, in Cape Coast to write, you know, to write the 
the accounts of, of, their, of their industries. And this was then checked by, uh, by us because we sent, we made, we made this part of uh, postgraduate studies. Those doing postgraduate studies uh, in education were those that went into the industry, you know, to liaise with them and to ensure that whatever has been written is acceptable to them and so on and so forth. And they got their, uh, that was their project work and got their, you know, uh, degree from, from that. So some of the materials produced, you know, uh, we produce the science in action uh, uh, for workbook for a uh, the resource book for teachers, and then uh, students workbook, you know, also for for students, uh, so that they can uh, relate to this, and teachers can use it to teach the topic that particular uh, team in the in the syllabus. Curriculum. Yeah, so I think I've talked about the approach. Uh, then from there, we brought uh, Sarkost to Winneba. In 1998, um, but the integration took place in 2000, in June. And as you can read, this center was set up as a Pan-African Research and Materials Development Center for the promotion of community science and technology in African schools with the ultimate aim of improving science and technology education on the continent. It was not only for Ghana. It was set up as a pan-African you know, system, center. And our job was to produce materials and uh, uh, ensure that uh, you know, our, our kids can relate to these. And a node, so this was the primary center, and a node of the center was set up in Swaziland. So some of us had to go to Swaziland to take them through how they can set up the node and so on and so forth, how to do the kind of things we started doing, you know. Uh, and South Africa had its own, you know. So, so, so it was into Tanzania uh, and Zimbabwe, and all the others, you know, were also doing that, you know, and we were supporting them. Uh, so it was, the idea was that Africa needs a place where, you know, if you want to have, you know, resource materials developed, people can come and learn how to develop those materials, go back to their own countries and start doing that. Uh, so, that was the main, main vision of the, of, of, of Sarkost, you know, to really be a center of this. So, and we try to do that, you know, we try to do that. A lot of training took place here, seminars took place here, and so on, you know. Um, even though it's a small thing over there, um, but a lot of things happened. You know, people from other places came and then uh, projects, you know, involving Tanzania, University of Leeds, and uh, SACOST was organized where we collected data on linking in, uh, uh, indigenous knowledge to uh, the world of work. You know. So these are some of the things, but the mission The mission included bridging the gap between school science and technology education and science and technology as practice today in the society. And then uh, identify indigenous informal and formal activities or industries carried out in the society. You know. 
carrying out, carry out research to highlight scientific, mathematical, and technology concepts embedded in them and develop multimedia science resource materials for science education at the school level, you know, for teachers and students. You know. So those were some of the things that uh, uh, we were trying to do. Um, and uh, a lot of teachers, workshops for teachers was done here. And teachers were trained on how to develop the materials. So uh, in doing those, so we take them to um, the, the village near the bridge where they're doing a petition, you know. So they will go and then look at it and then try to identify the science concepts in that. Then they will go to the blacksmith shop there and then do the same thing, you know, a number of places where they had to go and identify that. And the idea was that when they go back to their schools, surrounding the school, there are in the community, there are so many other uh, uh, activities going on. They can use the same principle and do that, you know, and get the students excited about, about this, you know. Um, so, uh, other, other, other uh, aspect of the mission is to promote the awareness of community knowledge and its integration to the global knowledge of science and technology and promote the genius development of, science, of STEM education through the utilization and integration of existing community-based resources, knowledge, and know-how with relevant school science and technology and also act as stimulus to and focus for the promotion of community science and technology in African uh, continent. The administration of the, the first administration was made up of myself, uh, the late Professor Brian Akwe, who was the deputy director at that time, and then uh, uh, Dr. Asari uh, Amiel, Asabri Amiel, and then uh, Mr. Dennis, Dennis was the administrator. And uh, the research assistant was uh, Mr. Ben Benjamin Ibenu. And then Professor Kola came you know, later on to join the team. The advisory board was made up of the vice chancellor's chair, the deputy uh, vice uh, uh, center coordinator uh, as member, uh, in fact, deputy director as member, uh, myself, I was the member, member too, and the secretary to the whole thing. Uh, but I think most of the notes were taken by Mr. Dennis. No. Uh, then we have representatives from University of Ghana. In, the, in fact, all the four universities, UCC, UDS, and uh, KNUST. And then the, right away from small scale industries, representatives from there, and also AGI, Ministry of Education, GES. This constituted the advisory board, you know, and uh, they were always, you know, uh, giving us some ideas as to what, you know, they could do to support. You know. <coughs> then we had some research groups, you know, we created some research groups, uh, ethnomathematics group, uh, and the members were, uh, at that time, Mr. Chris Opoti, now Professor Opoti, uh, Dr. Kofi, uh, Dr. B. A. Shen, of, uh, uh, late Dr. B. A. Shen, and then Mrs. Gladys Salote from Price Secondary School. She was one of the first to actually do uh, a project in ethnomathematics looking at the Winneba market uh, women who are selling oranges and other things, you know. So she was looking at the way they had arranged that thing, you know, and the mathematical, mathematical concepts embedded in them, you know. So that's what they were doing, you know, she, she was doing. And uh, um, uh, it was interesting that uh, when she finished the project, there was an international conference in Accra. She presented a project at that conference, and everybody was asking her, 
you know, how did you come by this? You know, I mean, people have not thought about it. You know, uh, but they saw, in a sense, in that that if you can teach mathematics from the way, you know, things are normally arranged and people go and buy it, you, know, you you really appreciate it. It becomes part of you. You know, it's not something from somewhere else, but something that you are used to, you know, you find it every day, you are going to the market, you know, how the, uh, those who sell yam, how they arrange it, you know, on the, on the table or on the floor, and so on, you know. So those are some of the things that, you know. So then we have indigenous conservation practices uh, that Professor Sabre was looking at, and myself, was at no science, science group. Um, Yeah, so as I said, we had a series of workshops that were organized, and uh, the um, facilitators came from various places, Uganda, um, Nigeria, South Africa, and, and so on, you know. And uh, um, uh, we also had, we had a, what we call the Af AFCLIS Grants Committee, you know, and they give small grants to people in other African countries that are doing something similar to this, you know. So we had some of the meetings here in, 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 at the U UEW, and uh, we awarded uh, funds to people to carry out activities in that area. Then, um, well, these are earlier publications. I've talked about some of them. Um, but we had flyer for the for for Sarko, for Sarkost with a uh, <clears throat> vision and mission and all the things there. Um, and then we had impact workshops and other things that uh, we also produced. We had newsletters. Uh, we even created a website where we were able to send some of the things that we have produced to other people. Um, so these are some of the things, uh, publications, uh, of you may be aware of it, you know, but we did a, work of, a lot of work on beads making, palm oil uh, extraction, palm kernel oil extraction, leather tanning, kinky making, herbal medicine, uh, how palm fruit becomes palm oil and margarine. You know. Uh, we try to to develop something for G junior secondary schools, you know, a cartoon kind of um, a booklet that shows the, the 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 process for making, you know, uh, margarine and so on. Uh, we were, however, only able to do just one, uh, uh, and, and then. Yes, I think we were only able to do one. You know. So then this is there. So these are some of the, just to show you some of the activities and some of the teachers' workshops that were organized um, at the fish place, you know, and, uh, and all the other ceramic places and so on, textiles and so on. Do you know what's can making in the schools? Yeah, and medicine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And these are, we used to have a uh, research grant that we also gave to uh, students in uh, the universities that are part of the advisory board. So um, these are the first group of people who actually received it. Uh, and they are uh, either in the final year or postgraduate students. Uh, and then we have White Benedict uh, Clue. But I think Ahmed is there. Yes, Ahmed from UCW, you know, at that time. So Ahmed has been with us for 
quite a long time. You know. Yeah, so I just conclude, you know, uh, I know there are other things that have been done. There are issues that probably we'll talk about how to now move the next step forward. How do we move forward? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that. But I try to get this, oh, where is it? There's a quotation I wanted to share with, with you. It looks like it has disappeared from my, but what it, it says is that, you know, this is uh, Tambo Mbeki, the former president of South Africa. And he was saying that, you know, it's so important for us to understand where we're coming from, understand ourselves. If we don't understand ourselves, you know, we cannot expect other people to even understand us. So if we can understand how um, some of the indigenous knowledge systems have come, you know, the indigenous knowledge systems are not only for science, the philosophy and, and all that, you know. Uh, so if you understand those things, these things will help us to develop, you know. And that's why SACOT became so important for us, you know, so that we can now stand upon it and say that, yes, you know, now Africa understand each other, you know. We understand where we have come from. So when you are developing, we develop from the basis where we are coming from. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof. Please, let's do it better. Let's do it better for Prof. Wow, this is so deep. This is so deep. You know, as Prof said, if you know where you are coming from, it, it guides you to where you are going and it makes you focused. Are we still going to export our knowledge or we are going to use the knowledge that we have here? That is why we are saying we need to contextualize what we teach. The foreign theories, the foreign materials that we use. Our children do not even know them. They can't identify themselves with those materials. But we have a lot of things that we can use here to teach the same mathematics, the same scientific concepts that we have been teaching. And our children will be able to understand. And that will make the information that we put out there relevant. And we can use that to solve the problems that we have in Africa. Prof, thank you so much for this presentation. We are so happy to have learned this. Now we're going to have a round table discussion. You know, the pioneers are here. And today, it's difficult to get them. So once we have gotten hold of them, we are not going to allow them to go just like that. So Prof have, has given us this presentation about the journey so far. But we want to delve deeper. Prof. Kola, Rahim is here. Uh, Mr. Dennis is here. We were expecting Professor Asabra Mayor to also be here. But at least we have majority. So we are going to delve deeper by engaging them in just some few minutes of interaction to understand issues more. And so to do that for us, in fact, we have our panel already seated. Professor Jefusam Anamuamensa is seated. Mr. Dennis is seated. Professor Kula Rahim is also there. Director is not part, but since he's there, I I'm sure. <laughs> so uh, we are going to invite our HOD, Dr. Kayuri, to come and then engage the panel in a deeper discussion on the journey so far. Please, let's welcome Dr. Kayuri with a clap. I believe we'll give the audience some few minutes if anybody has something to uh, say. So you can add that to it. Thank you very much, uh, MC. So um, following this exciting presentation, we have some few questions to ask for each of them to uh, share their wisdom with us. 
and then for the audience, we may also ask some questions. So listening to Prof, um, I want to start with you actually before I come to Dennis. So we had one of our issues as we want to know what is the future direction of uh, SACOS now in relation to the new trends and then in relation to the new curriculum that we have. Where can we locate uh, SACOS activities? Mm, thank you. I think uh, what I left out in our discussion uh, was the, so how did Cycos now became part of a three department uh, consortium? Uh, and probably um, <coughs> where do you move from, or what happened, and where do you move now? No. Yes. Um, I think uh, um, during Professor Sobram your you know, time, uh, we realized that uh, the university was not supporting SACOS in any way. We were depending upon foreign money, you know, to run all the activities. And it was not sustainable because the idea was that when the inauguration came, the idea was that an university would take over, you know, and then make this place a center of excellence for production of materials and training of a lot of people. But uh, the university did not follow that. And we have Encribe and also, either, also suffering in some way. So the decision was taken to bring the three together into, into an institute, which hopefully will be, then be uh, supported by the university. Um, and I must also say that the, during that time, I was to formulate you know, um, the, uh, the structure for, 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 for the place. And when we were doing that, you know, we needed a name for the place. We were struggling with the name until uh, Professor Kula came out with, you know, Iris. You know, then we all bought into it, you know. Uh, but Iris has gone through a checkered history. Uh, it's been uh, an orphan in the university. Uh, it's been deprived of nourishment for its work. And therefore, Iris could not find its feet, you know, in order to do the kind of things that it does, you know. Um, because we could have used, you know, uh, graduate students, students to collect all these, do all this research for us, you know, for something that we can give to them. But uh, that was not done. There were promises of doing things and so on, the promises uh, failed. Um, uh, we're lucky that now we have the roof even on this. So when it rains, it doesn't rain in the offices of the director and other people. You know. So we've come a long way. So how do we now move forward? You know, I think that, uh, um, well, deputy director is here. Um, there should be, as he rightly said, there should be a lot of noise making about STEM, and the Minister of Education is making noise about STEM. 
um, um, to transform the nature of the secondary education and so on in the country. Um, so it becomes very important you know, for SACOS to play a great role in this. But it can only play the role when the, it gets university support. The university needs to support you know, uh, this center to really uh, be the leader in the affairs of uh, uh, science and technology in the country. You know, I must just by the way say that you know, uh, Lagos State University has set up a similar thing, but they, they came to learn from us. You know, and then they have set up. They got money. They have even got World Bank money to support them. Mm -hmm. So. So um, I think we're playing down on people don't understand. They don't understand. That's why I gave you the rationale for, 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 for setting this up. People don't understand you know, why we should be looking at indigenous industri uh, industries. You know, uh, it's not part of this. We should be thinking about computer and uh, artificial intelligence and robotics and some, that's what we should be thinking of. Yes, we need to think about that. But where do you start from? You know, so it becomes important for us, you know, when your own colleagues, I mean, Sarkoz suffered a lot. I mean, you, you want the colleagues to come, but they don't want to come. <laughs> they don't want to come. They are not interested, you know. Uh, and um, it's unfortunate, but these are things that uh, you know, we need to do a lot of uh, sensitization. Uh, when I was coming, I was thinking that I will, I will find the place full with uh, the lecturers and so on, you know, so that uh, at least uh, I, will, I, will, I will try and challenge them on, on, on some of these areas. You know. Unfortunately, it's, it's in-house then, so we're not able to do that. But as I said, you know, um, the director and the deputy and HOD need to uh, have a, a close um, interaction with the acting vice chancellor, you know, uh, and uh, let him understand, you know, the agency even in this. You know, we need to understand ourselves. You know, who are we? You know. Uh, we don't even understand ourselves. We want to understand somebody else. I and mean, it doesn't make sense. You, know. uh, you wear clothes and so on. You don't even know the kind of patterns that are in the cloth you know, for you to use it in your teaching and so on. Uh, so where are you going? Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, it's, it's important that we do that. You know. There should be funding for the, for the center. You know. Funding is very important. Uh, these things that we have done and are there, uh, it, it's only, I would say, 0 0.01 percent of what we should do. You know, the majority of things are there. You know, when we went to the north and saw a lot of areas that we could, but we couldn't get money to do it. You no, know, so, so well, you know, what can we do? You know, if the the system is not supporting us, then uh, it looks like, um, as I said, we are in Siberia, you know, and not enjoying the, uh, the reality of, of, of the university. You know. uh, the university has missed and uh, forgotten about us. You know. But these are important things. You know. It's not about somebody, it's about the country. You know. If we put the country first in everything, we will see that we'll be moving forward. You know. But we put personality first. We're not going anywhere. You know. We'll go round, 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 end up at the same place. Well, <laughs> thank you. I don't know what my colleagues want to say. Something. Thank you very much. So um, before I come to Dennis to talk about the material production, I see him opening some of the previous materials. I'd like Prof. Um, Kola Wale Rahim to uh, also give us his perspective and add SACOS present outlook. Yes. Yeah, 
Thank you. I think um, Rosanna Mohamedza has said um, almost everything. Um, well, we knew each other a long, long, long time ago, 1997, 19, no, 2003, he sent uh, Professor Emina, John Emina, to Finland for uh, a conference which I, I facilitated over there. And then 2004, he himself came and said, um, Kola, you have to join me to develop <coughs> what uh, we now call SACOST. Uh, so here I am. Um, Prof, with your permission and the deputy director this year, I would like to say and um, request that all of us here, we keep uh, just a uh, one minute silence for Mr. Emmanuel Kutoglo, who was very, 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 very influential in making Sarkost what it is today. Just one minute silence. Thank you very much. Actually, Sarkost, when Prof decided that um, it should come to life, and I came, we started to hunt for different kind of people. Because um, we said it is multidisciplinary. It's not just about science, it's about everything, anybody who is interested. And I remember that um, there's this man who also retired 2007, living very close to Professor Moments as a building as a vice chancellor. That is um, Professor Kwakufi Azazu, who was very, very knowledgeable about the uh, indigenous activities and so on. And Prof said, that, this is an interesting man. <laughs> Let us get him. And then we got him. He actually contributed a lot to what Sarkoz uh, developed. And then um, we also decided to have people from outside. For example, we had um, Dr. Nomashi, who is a herbalist. But of course, he went to university in India. And that is where we came up with uh, the herbal medicine, which did very well. Prof tried as much as possible to promote all these uh, indigenous knowledges, which we dismiss as no knowledge. And that is uh, the colonial mentality. But as Prof said, before you can get something as yours, before you can own something, you must invest. You cannot own something which somebody invested in. And I think that is what we are having you know, in Africa today. Because you don't expect somebody to invest in how to make a vaccine for COVID-19. And then you are expecting that uh, they should give you, you know, <clears throat> the, 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 the know-how of it. Yes, they can give you as present because now they have to get your money back. So now they said it's free. And what we are seeing here in Africa now is that uh, probably you are going to be forced to have the vaccine, whether you like it or not. When the thing came, of course, because uh, almost every day I talk with uh, Professor Namuwa Mensa and Professor Day about what are we doing in Africa concerning challenges in general, education in general, not just science, that uh, why is it that we have not heard African as a scientist coming up and saying that, yes, we are doing our own research on, for example, COVID vaccine or medicine so that uh, we can use it here. 
But we had some political talks where you had people saying that, oh, it's not scientific, oh, we have to test it. But where do you test, where do you confirm that an African medicine made in Africa is good? It's going to be in the United States of America. Or you go, you have a tropical medicine college in the UK, which is very interesting, very funny. But you don't have tropics in UK, but that is where we send our people to, to go and study tropical medicine. So what Prof was trying to do by starting circles is to have some kind of an ownership of our own science, our own education, and contextualize all these things so that we can teach. But as he said, many of our colleagues, they didn't understand it. I would have loved that uh, Professor Sabira Meyao was here. He couldn't make it. He sent me you know, a message just from uh, 40 minutes ago that uh, he will not be able to, to come, but he, he wishes us well. So the future of SACOST is in the hands of this university. You see, it's like um, a saying which a, a good friend of mine, he was here last week, Professor Obebe, he's now 81 years old. He said uh, when people ask, an old man, that um, you are wise, we want you to tell us something. And then they had a bird in their hand, in one of the hands, and then they folded the two hands and said, wise man, you are an elder, can you tell us what happened? What has happened to the bird? And he said, well, if I said, this bird, you have squeezed it, is dead, and you open your hand, it's not dead, you will say, I'm a fool. If I said it's not dead, and you squeeze it, and it dies, you say, I'm a fool. So he said, the wise man said, look, the life of the bird is in your hand. And that is what um, I'm trying to say by Sarkos life, future, is in the hands of the university. If the university doesn't invest in Sarkos, Sarkos may not die but others will take what Sarkos has produced and develop it. That is what <coughs> Prof just mentioned about Lagos State University in Nigeria. They studied what we have been doing for years, and they were able to get uh, $25 million from World Bank. And now they have Center of Excellence, which they, they, you know, they are managing there. But you see, the problem with us in Africa especially is that um, we don't value our things, and I think that is not new. We think that when you talk about indigenous things, it's about superstition, but it's not superstition. We have been able to prove that, that Gary processing, you have a lot of scientific concepts in it we can use to teach our kids, but because we are not interested in what we can produce ourselves, that is why we are, in a way, stepping backwards. This very circus, I can say very proudly, it's in Finland, which is one of the best when we talk about education in the world. They didn't steal from us. Prof came there and gave you know, a lecture and they were asking me that, did you say this man is the first chancellor and he had time to prepare all these things he has come to give, give us? But of course, now they had what they call community studies because they thought that yes this is something they should go back and also study some of those issues which they can call indigenous uh, issues in their community it's from circus but if we are not proud of our things we will continue to borrow from them and then um, just to say one more thing i'm sure you will still have some questions so I want uh, Mr. Dennis to say something. That thing is that uh, we were looking, that is um, Professor Kwekuvi Asasu and myself, to write something on knowledge dismissed. We call it knowledge dismissed. And we were going to inform Professor Namu Amensa about it. You know, it is about the waste of African intellectuals. But unfortunately, that my friend, Professor Kwaku got ill. He's still alive, we thank God. 
but so we couldn't we couldn't do much about it. Then there's another thing, it's going to be part of the future of SACOST. And that is um, we must do some studies on challenges of science education in Africa. You know, what are the challenges? This I'm putting forward so that um, the HOD and others can see that we have a lot of things to do which we can do if the university supports us. This is coming out of our observation of teams reports, which Professor Anna Momenza is one of the main uh, you know, architects of, that is the Trends in International Mathematics and Science Study, which you see the report, I think, uh, every other year. But then we see that uh, all the countries that participated and those from Africa, they are always first from the last. Ghana participated one time, first from the last. Why? But then Prof and I, we went through, we saw that all the questions concerning tropical issues, our students did very, very well. But all other questions, they didn't, just because it is not their own. What do you think an African student will say about snow? When they say, you know, give us the seven types of snow. Somebody who is living in Winneba, he is used to what you have, the ocean here and so on. So this is, I think, what uh, we are trying to say, that we have to conscientize science and mathematics. And for sure, we will still hear more from us. Let me give a chance for my colleague, Mr. Dennis, to, to say something. Thank you. Uh, Yes, so we'd like to listen to the administrator and I would like him to speak in connection with the material production because he was the custodian of most of the materials. So if you can uh, also tell us your experience, how you came out with over, I think, 15 uh, different books on kinky production, leather making, all those ones, your experience, and where are the material? Anyway, <coughs> thanks for the opportunity. But before I say anything about the material, I would like to also say something about what I also believe in, uh, the, the, the dream that brought uh, into being Sarkos and uh, I happen to be called into to play a part. And uh, as a student, and then later as a science teacher, I realized that many uh, students were not choosing science because they felt it was a very difficult subject. The concepts were not easy to grasp. And how do we move forward and uh, have scientists uh, if the, those who would have been the scientists did not grasp the concept. Because I'm, I'm sure many people, uh, many of the students who did not choose science because they did not understand the concept, if only they could grasp the concept and have taken that line, may have probably have been better scientists than what we have. So grasping the concept was very, very important. And uh, when we were teaching, many of the examples that were given were foreign, were foreign, which a student could not identify with. So this 
trying to get the uh, science concepts from the indigenous knowledge, whatever is in the environment of the stu uh, students, I think was a very beautiful uh, thing to do in the sense that every, uh, in fact, let me probably move into the example of our Lord Jesus Christ. When he was teaching, he would use examples of what people were used to in the environment. The parables that he, he gave were based on the experience, what people are used to. So, in the same way, if we are teaching science, the concepts must be based or we can uh, develop the concepts from people, uh, what the students are used to in their environment. We have mentioned Kenke production, uh, beets, uh, leather making, gari processing, and uh, many others. If, if we use this to bring out the concepts, because we break whatever, uh, whichever, is, if it's Kenke making, the stages of the Kenke making, and the science concepts at each stage, it becomes easy for the student to grasp the concept. And uh, one thing also I, I, I liked about what we were doing in the program is to involve the teachers and, uh, in fact, Association of uh, Ghana Association of Science Teachers, Ghana uh, is it GAST, Ghana Association of Ghana, uh, they were involved. We got them involved. Then the Ministry of Education, GES, and so forth and so on. And uh, moving from, uh, we go, went through it, it to all the uh, regions, all the regions in Ghana. And uh, at wherever we went, uh, the workshop, before we, it, uh, we came together to have the workshop, we would visit some of the indigenous activities and then later on come together and as a <coughs> it is through that, for example, that this was produced after we have gone through all the 10 regions of Ghana. But my point is getting the teachers who were in the, in the classroom involved and uh, getting the, uh, those who matter in the Ministry of Education also involved. I think all helped. And uh, if we could only continue, if what we started could be continued, the grasping the concepts by the students would be easier and uh, we'll have more students choosing to be science students instead of the other areas, even though they are equally important. But we hear often that the future, if we want to develop and develop fast, we have to, it will be in the sciences and the mathematics. That is where the future lies. So I have not talked much that what I'm saying is that we involved the those who matter, the teachers in the classroom, as association of, uh, Ghana Association of Science Teachers, in various workshops that we had. And uh, it's true that we were able to come out with uh, uh, the publications that we have. So that's what I want to add. Thank you very much. I think uh, one aspect that we would like to know is about the materials, whether they are in hard copies, soft copies, in case we want to uh, digitize them. Is it possible we can have some of these ones? I think that, uh, um, somehow along the line, 
because the we produce the film uh, on CDs and so on, um, when they were produced, um, these materials became outdated and we needed to transfer them into um, the more current you know, uh, 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 tools. Unfortunately, well, one of, one of the things <laughs> we've been talking about, um, Mr. Kutuglo was the one who was doing it for us. So he had everything on his, uh, supposed to be on his laptop. So when he passed away, we were wondering uh, how to <laughs> get him to um, get his uh, family to, to, to give us the materials and so on. We've not been able to do that. No. Um, so we have a little problem there. You know, um, because we thought that, uh, and he did a few for us for workshops and so on. So we entrusted everything to him, you know, believing that when he finishes everything, then we'll find a place to store them. Um, and since he passed on, um, I think uh, some attempts have been made, but would not be successful. But we need to keep on probably talk to the family you know, more and see if, I don't know whether this laptop got stolen during the accident or not. Um, so we need to find out. Kola, you have been, so you may want to say something about it. Yes, unfortunately, we have not been able to talk with um, any member of his family. I am thinking that if I could get his uh, senior brother, maybe that will be easier to to ask, not not the wife. But uh, we will we will still try, because um, to be candid, I think uh, he had almost all the materials that we could. Actually, we were even planning, you know, with him that um, we were going to start a new production, then we were thinking we rescated the, 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 the newsletter, which uh, he was the first uh, producer. But, um, well, <laughs> we still have uh, the problem of not knowing how to, to get those things. What we have are the old um, things they don't use anymore. The one we went to use at uh, Abuakwa, Tafo, which uh, they are just uh, <laughs> impossible to, to wash, to put together. So we don't see how we can locate those things. Even some of the materials which we thought we could uh, review with Professor John Emina, we don't have them either. Because I remember that uh, we sent these publications to the University of uh, Cape Coast, UCC, and then um, they approved of them. They said they are good, they are all right, but they wanted us to scale down the, the English language to come to the level of uh, the JHSS um, students. So that is where we, we are. But I think um, if the university will see the future of SACOST as very bright, as I am seeing it, because it's going to be the future of all societies, all universities, I think we will go back to the time of uh, Bologna, where you just have to study what you have as indigenous. I think um, if the University of Education will invest seriously on it, get even the, 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 uh, the students who are going to be teachers to be involved, let us get their curriculum to also include this kind of uh, indigenous uh, science, not only science, indigenous arts. And that is why we have even extended, probably the HOD was going to ask about that. We have extended the Sarkoste uh, Arena to STEAM, 
instead of just STEM, STEAM, because we have been doing some things with uh, the, the, the theater arts, that is uh, the school for creative arts, where the present minister of education is very interested in when he came to UEW two years ago, I remembered I discussed with him while we were having lunch, and he said, yes, that is true. Why is it that we think the arts students, they are not as good as uh, science students? And we have been seeing that uh, I think almost thing is very scientific. And now we have even extended to Canada where we have a uh, Professor Day who is supporting us and very interested in indigenous knowledges. Fortunately, that project is continuing. But recently, they have just uh, written a proposal which uh, the HOD SACOS is aware of. They have signed a kind of a MOU and they have sent a proposal to have some kind of funding for what uh, we call the Fall Institute, which they did two years ago. They are coming again. Prof, I think you were here that, that time also. So I think this kind of uh, collaboration should continue, but UEW should not allow you know, the outsiders to come and take the pride of them. Because if UEW doesn't invest very well in Sarkozy, I'm sure the University of Toronto will get a lot from us, and then we'll take it to Canada, then we will be hearing from them, and now they have to teach us what they have taken from us. That's uh, how So we'll give opportunity to the audience if you have some questions um, for, for them before we come to the last part of our questioning. So if you have any questions, yeah. yeah. I was interested to see how uh, studies went on. I think it was Legon with the use of charcoal. And I'm thinking about it that, ah, is that the reason why people are now doing too much charcoal toothpaste? Could you help me to understand why? This simple charcoal thing that we were using when we were little has now become the order of the day. And circles could be blowing their horn about how to understand this little concept. Uh, Prof, to be very soon, Reverend, if I may expose that. Anyway, I think um, what you said is what I said, that if we are not careful, even in Ghana, we will see that another university will come up and just give another name, which will not be Sarkozy, but they will be doing what Sarkozy has been doing for years. For example, and um, I'm happy what we are doing today is partly because of the pressure also from uh, our DR, Mrs. Tete Mensa, that we have a lot of documents, we have a lot of materials, we should make noise. See, when I told people that 2017, this very room where we are now, we had students from Winnipeg led by Mr. Cosmos Emina at that time. And we had series of experiments on how to purify water with your local materials. It was sponsored by Iris, which was not Iris, Iris, sponsored by Carnegie. So it's a world, a world uh, program or competition. And then you see, these are our students, they were invited to US, Washington. And they were there and they came second internationally. But they came, nobody talked about them, they were gone. Because here we tried charcoal to purify the water. We tried uh, the neem leaves to purify the water. Then we got to see that charcoal and the neem tree mixed together did a good purification. That is what they took to USA. 
Maybe very soon, they are going to be sending us, uh, you know, this mixture, and then they will say, you know, it is their own. So these are issues I think we have to seriously, you know, attend to. It's a, it's a, it's a challenge. That is why I'm saying uh, maybe even I've challenged uh, Professor Namor Mensa, you know, not quite long ago that uh, now that uh, we can talk, because we, we shouldn't be fearing that, okay, maybe they will sack us from the university or something. So we have to be radical in what we are doing. We should come up with, uh, you know, some kind of a publications. We are involving Professor Day also. How do you contextualize, you know, teaching, not just only science? Because many of us here, even here in Winneba, you ask some kids in Winneba, or even adults, maybe they have traveled, they have come back, that what do you think of Winneba? They don't know much about the sea which they have. And I always say, if we had been able to contextualize what they teach them in the school, not just what they have in the curriculum, let them know about the waters which they have around them. They will not be going and doing their thing just as they, they, they are still doing. Because then they know that water is life for them. They must take care of it. And also, I always say, indigenously, when we talk about indigenous knowledge, you teach about environment. And I, I, will, I, will, I will challenge us to go into our languages, original languages, and see the definition of environment. Environment is not part of us. We are part of the environment. You see? Because if we do anything bad to what we call the environment, we see it as a peripheral. It comes back to us. And an example is if we die, we are buried. We become part of, you know, environment will still be there. So we are just, we become, a, you know, soil or what do they call it? So these are issues I think we have to review what we are teaching our kids in the school. All this, uh, what we call superstition, that don't go to the sea to fish on Tuesday. If you go, something will happen to you, which we think is superstitious. We should again reconsider it. It is a way, it is a mechanism of controlling, you know, people. When they say, don't go to that forest, don't cut anything there. If you do it, maybe your mother will die or something. You don't want that, so you don't go. But now that we have the Bible, we have the Quran, they say, oh, in the blood of Jesus, nothing will happen to you, go. But it was our own way of controlling our environment, maintaining our environment. It's not bad to be religious, but let us think local or act local and maybe think global. That is very important, especially we have uh, what we call uh, the discussion about this uh, climate change, which people have been you know, talking about. What is my own concern that an American, a European will be telling me that, oh, cut down, you know, the use of charcoal because, uh, you know, I'm not seeing the effect that much here. I'm not developing. You are the people who are releasing the carbon into the atmosphere and it's affecting everywhere. Now I have to pay for it. I think there is something which our leaders, and especially not political leaders, the intellectuals, they have to become radical they have con to conceptualize issues, problems, and then we can move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm not a scientist, so I'm just wondering, because at the moment I'm producing pure water, and we, we've imported charcoal into one and uh, one side of the purification, and then they have very clean so sand which is like pebbles of stones. And then there's another thing they call rains. And I look at these three things that my processes go through and I say, so what? Then it comes out to have a very clean water. I think we should know why we use charcoal, why we use this and that. And for that matter, the publications, you know, it's all right to talk to the intellectuals about publications, but in simple terms, what is happening that I have to use charcoal? Thank you very much. And I think if we actually read the books that they have produced, 
they have simplified, no, they have simplified it for us, and Prof has samples of them to use that to relate and answer your question. Prof. Um, for very uh, I think you, the question you, you asked is very important. You have the sand and then pebbles and then uh, the charcoal there for Hello? Yeah. Uh, so, so in doing that, we, we started another set of books, and one of them was uh, how palm oil uh, becomes mushroom. And this was meant as a reader for junior high schools. So it's in cartoon form, which is, makes it more interesting for them. So we have cartoons of uh, things like this. Yeah. And uh, as you go through, you have, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, so, so the idea is that how do we present this to, to the kids so that they can, they can understand the science in it? So you do a cartoon and then put the concepts there and then they read through, you know, and somewhere they have to do an experiment themselves, you know, and, and see how the thing goes, you know. So the, the, it's important, you know, as you rightly said, we need to understand what is before us. What am I buying, you know? If I go to the shop and I'm buying, uh, say I'm buying even water, the concentration of certain chemicals in some of the waters, you know, some are high, some are low, you know. Um, some of the Americans, when they come, uh, the black Americans, they, they look at some of the, the, uh, uh, the water, that we sell here, you know. And then they look at it and say, oh, this is 5%, this is 13%. I said, oh, no, I won't buy this one, I'll buy this one. You know. uh, and that's, that's the, uh, what we want our kids, you know, our students to also imbibe, you know. Um, you don't just buy things because they are selling it. You, know. you need to understand it as much as possible. Where you can understand it, you know, so that then, so these materials are supposed to provide the teacher and the students with some information that enables them to understand the, their environment, what they are buying, what they are doing, and so on. You know. So you take the dokuno. The dokuno, you know, uh, uh, you go through the. Uh, pre-fermentation stage, then fermentation, and then post-fermentation, you know. And the pre-fermentation stage, you have to clean and remove all those things that are big, uh, garbage in it, you have to remove them. And we have to do winnowing to do that, you know, and, and so on, you know. Uh, in the fermentation stage, what really happens, you put it in the maize in water and for maybe two days or whatever, and then, you know, what really happens there, you see some bubbles on top of it. What are those bubbles, you know? So you really challenge the individual to understand some of the things there, and they can relate it to the science they learn, you know, uh, easily, you know. You make in Gary, you go and uh, mill it and so on, you put it in a sack, you put weights on them, you know. Why the weight, you know? You put in pressure, you know, and the thing squeezes it down, you know, and so on. So that's, that's, 
the, the kind of things we, we believe that teachers, if you are teaching certain concepts, you can easily refer to that. And then the students will be uh, familiar with it. You know, and that's what we want. Because it's something that their mothers are doing. Their mothers are doing uh, palm oil extraction. You know, um, by boiling the the, the abiyankwani <laughs> from the soup, you know, and then suddenly, you know, the oil comes on top, you know, and they take the oil for another meal somewhere else, you know. Uh, so when you're talking about the scientific concepts, they understand it, you know, and they appreciate it. Science is not strange anymore. Science is with us, you know. It's not alien to us. It's part of us. That's what we want to see. And I think that the same thing applies to all the other areas in STEM. You, know. um, you, you were talking about engineering. You know. This uh, putting blocks and so on, on, on this, it's, it's part of design engineering. You know. You know. So it's, it's how we, we go about it. You know. How we go about it. You know. uh, and they will acquire those, those kinds of uh, uh, concepts easily. Thank you. Um, yes. Please. So, uh, yeah. I just want to, because um, Prof was um, asking particular about um, charcoal. See, charcoal is um, a material you use for purification. You know, it attracts bacteria, and then it's a filter the water. And if you add, let's say, neem leaves, which we did here, is a kind of a thing you can use instead of chlorine. And that is why we see some of the water we drink is even not good water, which comes from the waterworks. It's not about, uh, you know, destroying their work. But when you put the chlorine over there, you measure it, the quantity you put, it lessens when it travels from there, let's say to, 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 to uh, what's it, low cost. Because it has traveled far, and then it goes through the pipe, it could collect other materials. So you, at low cost, drinking the same water, which is very pure, somebody is drinking around the, you know, around the waterworks area. It's not, it's not the same, you see. So that's why if we can, and then I think uh, some of us, if we, uh, if we had lived with uh, some of our grandparents and so on, we will see that uh, some they used charcoal, you know, to purify water. They just put it and then they pour the water. And I think even the filter, which is modern, you still have some charcoal which they put and then it sieves the bacteria. And I think that is what it is best, you know, we have to develop it before we can say this is the best. But we have not developed it, we are just using the, I think, um, yes, <clears throat> Mr. Amiri. My little knowledge about uh, charcoal is that it has a loose bones and it attracts all other chemicals. So when you put it in a chemical with the water, it takes off all the Dead or other compounds and allow water, which is neutral, to pass through. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Just a small addition. I remember at a very tender age, I had a terrible stomach problem, and people who happened to be around just said, Why don't you go and then grind charcoal and add some little salt to that? We did it just took it up, had to go flat on the stomach, and within five minutes, I was just snoring. And so I think, yes, it has some medicinal, you know. So these are things that we'll probably have to investigate to really know what is in that, the power in it. So when we are talking about it, we know that, okay, when we use it here, this is what it is. And of course, one thing we have to be very careful about is that not all the trees will give you charcoal, which will do the same thing. 
So that is what I think. Yeah, P, let me also ask my experience. Uh, you know, on charcoal, we the uh, equipments. Our best soup is the uh, abenquine. You are happy? <laughs> it's abenquine. And I remember in the village, in a time, every day we eat abenquine for food. And uh, because uh, we have to get leftovers for the following morning kinky, the, our grandmother will put charcoal inside. You know, so I used to ask, why charcoal? Charcoal is black, and we are eating the red thing. And it says that so that it doesn't go bad or it doesn't soil. So um, it absorbs scientifically. Yes, yeah, so that is the uh, knowledge from, from, the, from the village. Thank you very much. I think we have been sitting for long, so I will ask the panelists to at least share with us their last thought, then we can bring this uh, uh, discussion to an end, with our deputy director giving us short closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I think uh, we'll set most of the things. But uh, I will just add that uh, uh, circus, uh, I've talk already talked about finance and so on. Mm. Um, we need to continue to uh, do studies on other indigenous knowledge systems. You know, what is operating in the various regions. Uh, if we can map them all and then put it as part of at least a uh, 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 resources, that would be really good, you know. So uh, for all the 16 regions in the country, if we can have, you know, uh, people do that, that would be helpful. And then also I'm saying that, uh, you know, um, we, can, we can start interacting with uh, the, uh, more seriously with the science faculty, you know, and then ask them to ask their students, you know, who are doing project work, wherever they are coming from, if they are from the Bona region or whatever, you know, to identify maybe uh, five uh, or three, whichever number, of uh, uh, indigenous knowledge systems there and write about them as part of their project, you know, identifying the scientific concepts in them, you know, uh, so that we can see from the various regions uh, what are the similarities with other regions and so on, and what is, uh, what is the variance, you know, uh, what makes it different from one region to the another, you know. So those are things that uh, probably, you know, uh, we need to do, you know, and I think it's so important, especially with training teachers, and these are things that teachers should be able to do. But for our young age, you know, we need to also produce, you know, readers, you know, like what I showed, you know, how uh, margarine becomes, uh, uh, oil becomes, farm oil becomes margarine, you know, uh, those kinds of things. I think uh, it's so important, you know, and uh, some of these can be used as a project. Uh, last, last three weeks I was watching CNN, and uh, there was an American company that is uh, crowding itself that now it has got so many uh, uh, customers, you know, they can't even supply them. And look at what they were producing. It was just bottling coconut juice. No, I said, ah, <laughs> you know, it's catching up. Everybody wants to juice, you know. Uh, so some of these uh, things can become, you know, export promoting activities. In fact, in South Africa, they are doing that, you know. They're doing some of these indigenous things have become export materials for them. You know. Thank you. very much, Prof. I think if this is going to happen, Prof, then I think um, the project, the research should not go like, I mean, this straight jacket and that, okay, 
uh, the T-test and then the F-test and all those things. So we have to deviate from the traditional way of doing research. Because if I have realized that, oh, this is what I have in the brown, uh, bron uh, bron uh, half of East or that, about five. And then somebody sitting defend asking me to, oh, where did you get this? And wh what is the uh, statistical significance or something? That will not be going anywhere. So uh, I think we'll have to look at some of the... Ahmed, we have uh, qualitative research and quantitative, you know. Uh, we we'll, we'll still do quantitative research in, in, in science, you know. And I think that's very important in order to look at it. Thanks. If I may, I just want to add something, Prof. It's, a, it's provocative, and that is, um, I've been wondering, is this theory before practice, or practice before theory? No. And I think our intellectuals should go into that. It's a challenge. Let us, let us take it from our own position, from the African perspective. Theory before practice or practice before theory. You see, do you know something, then according to that thing, then you theorize it. For example, the theory of the gravity. Is it not that when you saw that this thing fell, then you started to find out how and why, then you get the theory about it, you see. So these are issues which I think, uh, as Prof said, that we don't have to always follow what they are saying. Yes, we have done that to a stage, which is good. But now let us say we want to start something else. Paradigm shift. I think it must come. It's very irritating for the status quo because you can't get somewhere, then they say, oh, you tell her what is the theory you are following and so on. Why? I think Prof mentioned that if we are writing something about mathematics, our students, you won't see them referencing Professor Asie Eduardo, Professor Mireku. They will be referencing the Europeans, the everything there. And one professor who is a good friend to Professor Namu Amensa and a good friend to me also, he is saying we should start to challenge our students. If you write a proposal, you want to do something, write something about, uh, you know, let's say mathematics. Let me take Professor Asie Eduardo again. And then me in Ghana, UEW, I read your proposal, then all your references, there's nothing about any mathematics lecturer in this university. I must question you. Have you actually gone through this university? You are talking about leadership in education. I don't see anything you know, in your references about Professor Edwards. I have to question or you are doing something about adult education in Ghana, I don't see any reference from Dr. Pajibo. I should be able to question that, no, you have not read. Go again and read. But we just take it, you know, as usual, that, oh, yes, you have done something. I think this is a challenge. We must challenge our students that, look, go deep locally. See what is being done locally. Contextualize. And then we know that, yes, you have been taught. Professor, um, Professor Okebukola, Prof, said that all those uh, people we now quote and so on, that what they did is that when they are in the university as a professor, they find students and they mentor them, they teach them. It is those students who will carry all their mentors and so on all around the world, and then we start to quote them. See, I think by now, I think by now we should be able to have people who will always be quoting Professor Anna Mohamensa, or we can say Anna Mohamensa method, Anna Mohamensa theory. If you think of what he has done in this Ghana, in Africa as a whole. But you don't hear. And all what he has been doing, teaching and so on, wish somebody who came, you know, for a conference or conferences, a European will go there and then will write and we will be referencing him. These are something we have to really sit down seriously and think about.
that's 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 my opinion. Speakers, I believe this has been very invigorating, very challenging. I believe our minds have been set thinking, and we are going to rethink the way we see and teach science. Because uh, we've been teaching science for long, but still a lot of students do not um, see the need to do science because they see it as an abstract subject, very difficult subject, and a lot of students are running away from science. I believe if we rethink and go about the teaching of science using contextualization, we are going to get our students interested in science, and we are going to help solve the many problems that we have in Africa. Thank you very much to our speakers. Thank you so much. So we'll take a few closing remarks from our deputy director. And we are getting to the end of the program. Thank you. So, please let's let's welcome him with a clap. The, um, the percentage of students doing pure science in in the secondary school has hovered around eleven to twelve percent. No. So for all the you know, students in the school, only 12% of them are doing science. No. So we can see that we are nowhere when we are told that uh, we must have 60% of people doing science so that we can, the country can move forward. You know. So we have a problem you know, which we need to look at. Thank you very much. All too soon, we have come to the end of this exciting program. In fact, I would have wished that um, we didn't have this in this small place with this audience, which for me is a biased one, because almost everybody here is either in circus, has worked in circus, or is uh, somebody, I mean, already in team with us. Because what we discussed here is very important and very crucial to this, our university. I would wish that uh, we extended this uh, program to the larger university audience, especially to invite the uh, management people as well. Because a time has come when we have to say it the way it is. We should be in a new era where everything must become or has become new. Because it is very sickening to hear, especially our vice, first vice chancellor, who is the founder of SACOS and the director of IRI, a former director of this institution, say what he feels. You could see the passion in him and how he felt that things should have been done differently. And the same sentiments were also expressed by Professor Kolawole and uh, um, our pioneer administrator, Mr. Dennis. Um, when we went to Anumabo on that uh, Anumabo declaration, I put it, <laughs> we all felt that there should be a U-turn or doing things differently this time around to project this institute to the level that we all expect. I would like to quote the vision of our university, because I don't want to go wrong in quoting the vision. To be an internationally reputable institution for teacher education and research internationally reputable. The key words there for me are education 
and research. And because we are in the of education, there's no doubt that we must do something about education. And research, you can't do teaching without research. So setting up an institute, institute like IRIS, which comprises of three key centers or three key departments, and CRIBE is for primary or basic education. SACOS is for science, indigenous science, and teaching, and SEPS is for educational policy. For me, this idea of establishing this institute is a very laudable one. So how come we have such an institute and a vision of the university in the direction of research, education and research, and yet we are in this state? Professor Anamoy Minister kept emphasizing that there is so much you can do in this institute, especially SACOS, but where is the support? Professor Kula kept saying that we have to invest in SACOS, and not only in SACOS, but in Aris. And he kept saying, and any time I'm with him, he has pain in him that how can, why do you want to reap where you have not sown? Why does UW want to get so much from Sarkos and Iris? When, I want to use the word, when they are refusing, operational word, to provide what they are supposed to provide so that we also reap and get the institution forward. I also wish that we had people from management, but it's okay because from here, like Professor Nimura, you said, director and leadership of this institute will have already have resolved and are going to meet with the um, leadership of the university, and like I said. We have to say what we have to say, and this time around, we have to say as it is, so that things move forward. We are not here to serve personalities. We are working as a body to serve the institution. So you don't put somebody somewhere because you want to punish the person. You don't transfer somebody somewhere because the person is not a friend. I wish I'm on live on Radio Windy Bay. Live, thank you very much. So we have to do new things and see this institution as a gold mine. Professor Kola kept saying that if we don't come up to tell people what we have done, or to showcase all what we are doing, or don't do what we are supposed to be doing, others will take the credit out of us. And that will be very bad. So, I was excited when I was asked to come to this department. When we went to Anmabo, and I met for the first time officially the people who work or the researchers in this iris, I became excited because these are people who are willing and are willing to do something. But you could see frustrations written all over their faces because of lack of support. And there we decided that we should do something new. The something that you want to do cannot be done if you don't get the necessary support from the leadership of our university. So we are appealing that we have the men and the women in this Irish Research Center, and that people are willing to work hard to achieve their aims. We cannot do these things. We cannot do, we cannot let live 
Professor Daniel Mensa and his crew have done. They've done so much. And it's a pain to hear him saying that what we have done is just 0.1%. Because my background in mathematics, I keep figures a lot. He said we have done only 0.1% of what we are supposed to be doing. This is very serious. It means there's a lot to be done. But that lot to be done, people are willing to do it. So we need also to make sure that we invest in this uh, research center. The last time we were at the Animal Medicine Conference Center on another forum, the former Vice Chancellor of Legon was, I think, the host, uh, guest speaker, and he kept saying that for him, universities should be research institutions. Even the whole university. What it means is that we must put premium on research. So if you are able to decide, take a decision that you have a research center like this, then it is our duty as the leadership of this university to ensure that the necessary funding, the necessary support is given to the institution. Look, if you want to touch so much from a research institution, all you have to do is to give them a seed of money and tell them that this is what I give you, this is what I'm expecting from you. And don't let them perform, and then you have a call to complain. But if nothing of such is coming up, and yet we expect something, then it is not good on our side. That's why most of the time, some of the time, I don't agree with that saying that uh, don't think of what you can, your country can do for you and think of what you can do for a country. It's not always true. It depends on where you are coming from. So I think it's time for us as a university to come up and change our attitude. Pro uh, I, I wish to assure you that the work that you have done with the founding members of SACOS will not be in vain. Those of us here, in it now, we have resolved that we shall do our best to ensure that the vision that you set for yourself becomes a reality. And I'm saying this because I see so much energy in the current head of department, Peter, and his um, staff, the NCRIP people, the sales people, everybody is ready to learn. And we also know that any time we call upon you, you willingly give us ideas, encouragement, consultancy, whatever. Professor Kluli, we are so grateful. Um, unfortunately, you'll be leaving us very soon, but you have assured us you are, that you are not gone. Even if you are gone, you are still here. And these days, that's, we all go digital already. We can be in touch. But remember that this is your home, and we expect you to be coming home, as in our language we say, Maunai ye intietia. Later I will explain the what I said to you. <laughs> so I want to thank everybody here, and I want to assure the pioneer founders that we shall do our best, and any time I call upon you, but before I, I call off, the head of the department said that this is going to be an annual affair, which is a very good one. And like I said, we have to make a lot of noise of our achievements. The 0.1% things that have been done, we need to make sure that people hear about it. We have to make a lot of noise to know that this institute is no more a Siberia as some people wanted to be, it to be, or tell me to be, we are going to turn it over 
to be like um, Manhattan in New York. Thank you very much. <laughs> for our deputy director thank you very much a very heartwarming uh, closing remarks and prof we say thank you so much for everything uh, on behalf of the director of the institute the deputy director um, the deputy registrar the HODs and everybody in Iris I wish to say thank you all so much for coming, especially to Prof. Anamwa Mensa. He keeps on responding to our call. Anytime we call him, he was with us uh, at Anmabo, and he's here again. Prof, we say thank you, and we are so grateful for your wealth of knowledge and your support. And as Prof said, we will keep the, the fire burning. The fire will not be quenched. So thank you very much, Prof. Prof Kola, we are so grateful for everything. Uh, you kept the fire going, and we believe that even in your absence, everything will be all right. So don't be thinking too much. Circus will keep on running. Uh, Uncle Dennis, we are so grateful for everything. To our media men, you were with us yesterday, and you are here. We say thank you so much. To NCRI, um, SEFs, staff, everybody here, we are so, so grateful for coming to support Circus for this program. We say thank you very, very much. The staff, uh, staff of Sarkos, Mr. Siam, Ahmed. Oh, the National Service. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the hardworking National Service personnel. We say thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Our HO, we are so grateful. The vision is, is great and we believe that it will come to pass. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. We now call on Reverend Dr. Alex J. Edwards to give us the closing prayer. Let's welcome him with a clap. Without him, we could have done very little Lord, we praise your name. You are so faithful that when we ask, you give. Freely have you given us the wisdom. Freely you have given us the understanding. And above all, I'm really faithful and grateful that we are now motivated to do exploits for you. Lord, how we got to know how we can do this is all by your grace. But above all, I want to pray for our leaders, especially Professor Anna Momensa, as he travel back to Cape Coast, wherever we are going, Lord, give us the travel message. Let us still remember that, indeed, we are one. And when the people is one, whatever they purpose to do, they can do it. Give us all the energy that we can use to bestow the grace that is abounding in this institution. For we have prayed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The offering bowl, please. Few announcements from the HOD. So, um, thank you very much. The panelists will remain seated for a while. And then uh, I think there's lunch for the media. We thank you very much.
Yes, so we have an old of Sako who has given way to a new generation. And so we wanted to be sure that we are starting at the right place and point where they left. I believe that it's, it's a good decision. You want, to, you want to tap in from what they have, their knowledge and experience. Exactly. So they are wisdom, they are vision for starting Sakost, and the knowledge and the experience that have gone through in producing a lot of materials that are tailored towards the teaching and learning of science and mathematics. Mm. Listening to the presentation, it seems uh, there is a lot that is expected or that, that they think uh, circles can do. Do you see that way? Yes, exactly. So they be able to undertake some projects that were sponsored by Talif and a lot production of material teaching and learning of science and mathematics and how the teaching and learning of science and mathematics. And so we think begin that because books on big and system and so mm. so um, uh, you are faced by um, uh, support ch challenge uh, you have a supporting deficit how is that obstructing your work yes so uh, currently and so from basic education who is specialist in mathematics and has interest in contextualized concepts using material around them. And then, and myself, mathematics. Then we have the last person who is uh, Charles Essam. All these people, we decided to call ourselves the STEM working group because now the movement is towards STEM, which is science, technology, mathematics, and uh, engineering and mathematics. And even we intend to add the art component. So you later on hear about STEAM, that is we are adding the art component because everything now revolves around using STEM to uh, teach all other subjects. Your, your immediate predecessor, Professor Rahim, uh, seem not satisfied that uh, these beautiful ideas that Sakos has uh, seem to be left somewhere and others are eager to pick it up. What are you going to do as the new director? What are the challenges? Yes, so there are a lot of challenges. He was also the only person after Professor Anna Momensa uh, left and so decided to also work in conjunction with other um, staff. But I don't want to target so much on the problems or the challenges that he encountered. What to see how we can project whatever they have produced and make sure that we make noise about it and let the Minister of Education hear about it because currently they are developing books for the uh, new curriculum. Can we how we can show books so that they will see the importance of also incorporating these ones into the current textbooks production system. So I was with the Minister of Education. The last time I had a discussion with NACA, and then we think that at least, little by little, something positive will come out. So we will not stop at this point. We will make sure that we make noise and let you support to let people hear that there's original knowledge that was created by Professor Anna Momensa and his team, and we are building on it. Thank you. So how do you intend lobbying management to support you? And aside getting the support of management, uh, will you look elsewhere to get funding support? Yes. Yes, exactly. So I'm happy that management approved this program. We were not to do, but they approved the program very promptly and asked us to proceed with it. So I think that 
they are seeing that young people are coming with special interest in this area and they are likely to support us and give us more funding. We have um, our director in Iris who is also interested in these things. Deputy director made comments about that. And so we think that there is a backing and that management will be ready to support us. The other aspect is that we are also looking for collaborators. Like I said, we discussed with NACA. We have already signed an MOU with University of Toronto. Two of our students will be, uh, one is into PhD, one is also um, uh, MPhil. They will also be undertaking a project with uh, students from University of Toronto on social justice, indigenous uh, knowledge systems. And so we think that these things are opening up circles, and sooner or later, people will hear about circles. How do you intend making the research that your predecessor did to impact uh, on, on local industry, like the production of Gary, the production of uh, palm kernel oil and palm oil? Yes. So like you said, these things involve people who are interested in actually working. And these young faculty are ready to support. So we'll be having collaboration with these industries to see how we can incorporate school knowledge into the community knowledge system. So we'll be visiting various production centers to have a discussion with them and see how we can support each other. So whilst we are building on knowledge, they will be able to expand on their um, productions. And who knows, now that we have uh, the government supporting policies like that, we think that perhaps we can also lace up with that and then we we'll see whether we can have this one district, one factory team, also supporting those local industries. And since they know that the knowledge is original from the university setting, they will be able to support and let the industries grow. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Akayure. Uh, Dr. Akayure is telling us that Circles is ever ready to support government uh, in its attempt at uh, industrializing uh, the country. Uh, the one district, one factory policy, uh, Circles buys into it, and they are ever ready to support with the in-depth knowledge that the center has. Thank you so much, for, uh, Thank Doc. Thank you so much, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so um, I talked to Professor Kuleware Rahim, Professor Rahim uh, is um, exiting as the, the, the director of SACOS. Uh, Prof, thank you so much for having you. Thank you. Mm. Uh, Prof, um, are you so worried that um, um, your ideas, the effort that you've, you've put in all these years are not being projected? Uh, well, yes, worried and not worried worried because um, I think SACOS should have been much, much better than what it is now. And I think um, UEW should be harvesting a lot of good fruits from SACOS by now. So that makes me to be, to be worried mm -hmm. and a bit disappointed because um, a decade working you know, with this institute and then you just feel that, oh, nobody is accepting what you are doing and you feel somehow disappointed. The same thing with Professor Namor Mensa. But we are happy that we are still alive. We are ready, you know, to, to support, to get involved in anything SACOS is doing. Those we are leaving behind, you know, we want to support them. But the university has to invest, as I have always said, because um, you can't have just one person, you know, at a center and you expect something to happen. Nothing will happen because he wouldn't be able to make a lot of things that he would have liked to, to make. You know, if you, I think you saw what Prof. Anna Mwemesa presented. When we started SACOS, we had about 12 staff members and it reduced to one. So you can imagine, what do you expect them to do? We are just, uh, you know, co-opting people from here and there to support us anytime we had uh, activities. There are a lot of things we want to do, and I am really, again, worried because people are taking our ideas and they are using it elsewhere, and they are pros prospering. So why not invest, make your own people prosper, and make your university a big one as it should be? 
Okay, Prof, um, did you ever consider going out there seeking for funds to undertake your activities? Oh, yes. Actually, we have been getting some fundings here and there anytime, for it, especially when we were having the World Environment mm -hmm. Day, which I instituted as one of the activities. So we had that annually, you know, it's part of my idea that we take the gown to the town. Mm. That means taking what you are doing in the university to the communities. Mm. And we do that every year. June 5th okay. is World Environment Day. And we, 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 we are doing well with that. We used to get some, uh, even though it, we may say it's small, 500 cities, 1,000 cities from mineral resource, um, minerals. Uh, commission. Yes, commission, for example. We used to get something from uh, EPA. I said, and then also from individuals, for example, the uh, was it the MP mm. of Ifutu, Alexander Fenyomak in Esquire, he used to support us. Then we have uh, even individual like Alaji Labran mm. in this Winneba, he used to support us. And I think if we continue to do well and they see that we are doing well, they will support us. See, because we have even tried that if we really continue to project ourselves very well. We can get support even as far as from Finland, because they are interested, mm. as far from uh, Toronto, Canada. But since the university itself is not projecting us the way we should be projected, so those people are reluctant mm. that, oh, if their university is not putting money into this, then what's, what, 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 why should we be so much uh, you know, involved? So I think Sarkos and especially Iris can get a lot of support from international uh, you know organizations mm -hmm. if we put the place in the right you know level that it should it should be mm. prof is the study of science that difficult it shouldn't be difficult but we made it difficult mm. and that is because we followed the colonial ideas mm. because they wanted to make things difficult for us it's as if we didn't have science at all. It's as if we didn't have mathematics at all. Even they were trying to obliterate our arts, artifacts. They stole some, they took them to, to Europe and said, oh, we don't have places Recently to keep Recently they, they returned some to Nigeria and Benin. Yes, but is that enough? But it's not their fault. Because when you even see what is happening in our countries, in Africa, in, uh, you know, you see that uh, our governments are not ready to have serious museums mm. where we can keep these things. Because the Europeans, yes, they may be selfish, but in a way they are correct. Because they return those things, and then we see that uh, the termites will attack them. And so, because we won't build, mm. you know, the proper places for them. And I think that is, that is uh, the issue we have, to, we have to investigate and control. Back to Sarkos. My, 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 uh, so to say, advice is that let us invest in circles. Let us make it feasible in the university. Let even the students who are going to become teachers experience the ideas of circles before they go down there. We don't allow them to go, and then we are following them to have some kind of a skills mm. training workshop. Mm. Let them. Let there be some kind of uh, teachings about indigenous science before they leave. In five, ten years, where do you want to see Sarkos? Oh, I want to see Sarkos having a kind of an international conference, inviting people, having a place, you know, of course, Sarkos will always be part of Iris, but having a place that they can invite people who are interested in indigenous activities indigenous knowledges to come and if we maybe stay three two months as researchers you know international researchers so that we make iris we make uew a reputable international institution thank you so much prof um, so i we just spoke with um, professor rahim uh, Professor Rahim is uh, the immediate past director of the Center for School and Community Science and uh, Technology Studies uh, of the University of Education, Winneba. Um, so today uh, is the, the last day for this year's 
conference um, on World Science Day, and the theme for the year is uh, Peace and Development. World Science Day 21, uh, the theme is Peace and Development. Um, um, Professor uh, Asiedu Ado is the Deputy Director of IRIS. Uh, Professor Ado um, spoke with so much passion that um, um, he's, he's going to ensure that uh, the activities of circles is actually supported so that they could do what is expected of them. Prof, um, good afternoon. Afternoon, sir. Mm. Prof, um, uh, you, you are here and uh, you've seen um, that uh, one of your departments is actually lacking support. You've talked about getting it. How are you going to ensure that management comes to support you? Yeah, thank you very much. Um, you, you, you said that one of our departments lack support. Yes. In actual fact, it's all of them. Okay. You know, we have three <laughs> departments. Yes. Uh, you all need a lot of support. And how will you ensure? Well, I think that uh, if I say I will ensure, mm. I don't have the right. Okay. I don't have anything okay. to that I will. How it? Yeah. Yeah. So what we th I think we should do is that we have to make constant reminder to mm. the authorities mm. that this IRIS uh, Institute has been neglected for a very long time. Mm. You see, universities are for research. Like I said mm. earlier, that's why management will ensure that at least something happens here, because it is not good to hear that Iris is dead. These are the things that we hear mm. officially. We know here, but mm. underground, if you are, if you make a census and you hear what we will mm. say about Iris, mm. as if it's not part of the university, because nothing happens here, but a lot is happening. Mm. I've been here for some few months or weeks. I could see that there's potential. Mm. So uh, now that we are here, we have all agreed to work for the institution. Mm. Uh, we, we need to, to ensure that things are done right. Mm. So, and I'm also hoping that management this time around will have ears for us. Mm. So that it's not that we are demanding, but it's their obligation also to ensure that things are going on right. Mm. Because if the glory comes, it's not coming from Iris. Mm. It's coming from the university. Even if one lecturer, uh, one professor makes an impact on the world scene, on the global scene, although they will mention the person's name, mm. but the, they are going to say that he's from UW. And that's what stays the shine. Mm. It's okay. So we are not serving an individual. Mm. We are serving an institution. Mm. So the institution should also make sure that at least certain basic things. We are not demanding too much. Mm. We are saying that some basic things should be done over here. If you like, go around, go even go to the director's office and see if this office befits a director mm. of an institute. Mm. There are so many particular things. Mm. It becomes so difficult to get, I mean, like people involved in this. So what I'm saying is that the university has an obligation. Mm. So then we also, this time around, we have to make sure or to ensure mm. that we constantly remind them mm. of what they are supposed to do so that we, they can also, they will also demand from us mm. what we are supposed to be doing. Mm. And you see, it is not good to all the time go around, you know, talking about this, 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 but there are basic things that should be done. Mm. Every research center must have funding. Mm. If you know the amount of money which is being funded in these three departments, mm. you, <laughs> You so you'll be surprised. Mm. So that's what we are talking about. Mm. There's so much in you didn't you see that Professor Anoma Mesa, the vice vice chancellor, and the founding uh, person of this Kosako, the way he was talking, you could see pain in him. Mm. You could see pain in him. Yes. And you know, even when we have our, our private chats about thinking about the the institute, you could see that people are not happy. Mm. This is it. If anything, out of respect, this place must be treated well, mm. just because even a former vice chancellor is, is, is in this institute, mm. but nothing is happening. Mm. So that's why we are calling for new wave mm. to blow around, mm. so that this gold mine, for us, we think that this place is a gold mine. Okay. Yes. Mm. Because, you see, we have three powerful uh, departments. Mm. 
you see. Circus is one of them. We, we circus talk about indigenous science, like we said today, and accepts policy for education. Mm. And now that we have been having this free senior SHA. high school, mm. and there are a lot of things to be done. Mm. The other one is Ancribe for basic education. Mm. So these are things dear to the present government. So, and if we are done well to have such an institute, why do you let it go rot? Mm. So this is where I'm coming from. Okay. That's why maybe I was too a bit... Uh, <laughs> I, I think uh, 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 those who are associated with this place will say you were right, or they were even lenient in uh, uh, maybe saying what you... Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Prof, what is community science? Oh, you see, the same science. What's a community? A group of people living in an area. Mm. So what they're saying is that we are doing science in our schools, mm. but what do we have in our immediate envir mm. environment so that when we are teaching the science, we use those things around us mm. exactly to teach so that kids get the concept very right. Mm. Like someone mentioned, if you are teaching a set examples and talk about snow, when someone has not seen the snow before, mm. but what I say, community science means that take the indigenous things around, make examples, show them how they can understand the science by using the things around them. them. That's okay. why they kept talking about mm. kinky making and purification. Gary making and all that. Charcoal things. So community science is about the community. Mm. What pertains in the community. Okay. Use it to teach science and math. Okay. Thank you so much, Prof. Uh, we'll be coming to you uh, more um, to look at your, 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 your field, mathematics. Thank, thank you very thank much. Thank you so much, thank Prof. You thank you. Um, so that was uh, Professor uh, Asi Eduardo. Uh, he's a professor of mathematics here at the University of Education in Ibar, but um, he's the deputy director here at IRIS. Um, we want to thank you so much for joining us on Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM and, of course, on Facebook at Radio Windy Bay 98.3 FM, where today we brought you uh, the 2021 World Science Day celebration, which was on the theme Peace and Development. I am Anamwa. Thank you. Thank you so much to our cameramen, our technicians led by A. B. Geni, Sheikh Osman Muminin, um, Sam Panam, uh, Francis uh, Doris, and uh, King Batuka. He's the brain behind it all. And of course, those uh, up there in the studios, uh, uh, Bright Fuga, uh, not forgetting Andrew Hammond. Um, so we meet again. Thank you from Iris. <laughs>